Uh, if anybody also, in the course of enforcing the law, goes overboard, he also faces the consequence of his action. In the course of our electoral history, we've never had a president who is contesting, taking a posture this hard against persons who intend to rig. And we have seen that oftentimes there are people who rig, and all of the time the situation is that, oh, the people after the elections are not brought to book. I'm glad and that you say, I'm, I'm very saying, glad that you say this hard. In other words, the words are hard. Definitely. And it is Do they have to be that hard? I think it has, that's a controversy no, here. I, I think it should be because it is a shame that our democracy is 20 years old and yet we still have strings of ballot snatching as part of the electoral process. There is nowhere else where we copy this democracy where people snatch ballot boxes. It's unheard of. So I should think that where the president say, I want us to hardly this time eliminate any form that will bring embarrassment to our democratic system, I think the president should be applauded for doing that. Because there is no way he's, he is first a lawful president. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have given an unlawful order. Anybody who understands the order as an unlawful order will have himself to be blamed. Now, we now see the chief of army staff briefing um, his men or over the words of the president and their expected conduct for this election. So he's given them a deadline. If you want to be partisan, by all means, leave the army. He's told them to avoid retired general, uh, retired army officers who are now in politics, at least until the polls are over. He's given us all you know, manner of instructions, and he said the army is going to deal decisively. He's also said they're going to be proactive, you know, that they're not even going to tolerate a situation where there will be ballot box matching in the very first instance, that before they, they will wait for it to happen, and then, you know, they will now try to apprehend the people. This time around, there will be no room for that. When the chief of army staff briefs on the back, I mean, shortly after the, the president has spoken, and there is still controversy over the words of the president. Do you really think that he sent words of reassurance to Nigerians about the security situation uh, that was going to be prevalent dur during the polls? Well, you see, in the, in the electoral process, there are two sets of people. There are those who want to come out, take their ballot, take their, their uh, voter's card, go and vote, and go back and wait for the results. These people really want security agencies to be there to assure them that they are not going to have anything that will intimidate them against expressing their conscience when they are voting. And then there are those who want to come to the ballot, to the voting area, to ensure that their will be done, even if it is contrary to law. I should think that the, the decision, the, the press statement of the chief of army staff is for those who want to come to the electoral election area f to violate the electoral process. I think for us that are going to vote and then wait for the outcome, we are very secured now and we are sure that the electoral process will go smoothly with all the assurances we are getting from the security agencies. Mm. Is that how you feel about it? Because <laughs> I'm wondering, he says that it's only people who have ulterior motives who should have any reason to fear in the very first instance. You think those who are raising fears are those people who might have a one or two things that they want to do, which is contrary to the law? Uh, it's, it's not true. Um, the, the point is that this nation seems to uh, be generating a lot of controversies and fear. And such fear drives people not to come out to vote. That's one point. Another point is that in democracy... Why do you think people are afraid, first and foremost? No, I say it's driving. Yes, I what, mean, what is it's cropping driving up. a lot of fear. Yeah, it will drive... Why, yeah, why it will, is that? Because, because I would like to, maybe, uh, why I'm going to uh, vote, I'm seeing military men carrying guns, uh, security agencies carrying... It's scary to any... No matter that they will not be at the polling stations. That they're usually armed men are usually never in the polling stations. Well, they're just meters away. We 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 are in this country. We know what the military has been doing. You've seen military men at the polling units with guns. In the history of Nigeria. I mean, in recent elections. Oh. In no, recent in the, elections. In, in history of Nigeria, we have seen it. But when I say when I say we know what is happening in Nigeria, we know the issue our military people have been having 
with uh, the proscribed IPO people, with uh, the um, Elzazaki a group, a group. We know what they did in Kaduna, where many of uh, the shy people were killed. So we, we have the uh, history, we have the background. But what I'm trying to say is that we don't need to militarize our environment because of a mere election. Election is a celebration of democracy. This is the way we celebrate democracy, and it shouldn't be militarized. The people we ought to be seen are the policemen. Now, when we are talking about the military, what business do the military have to do with our election? They don't have any business. Mr. President doesn't have the power to be deploying military to supervise or to secure anybody during the election. It is the responsibility and the duties of the police. The court has said that. Even as far back as 2005, the Court of Appeal gave a judgment in Yusuf against uh, Opasanjo that the military has no business with our election, that citizens should protect their democracy. And the police, by virtue of Section 215 of the 1999 Constitution, is the one that has the duty to maintain peace and order. I have to ask you, we know that even within internal security matters, the military ought not to have any role. It is the police that should have the majority of the role. But mm. in almost, even in, <laughs> we're not in war, but mm. I was even in peace. We're almost as if we're at war. Exactly. During yes. elections, it's almost as if, as if we're at war. So I was about to say true. during peace time <laughs> <laughs> in, in Nigeria, in how many states, in almost all, virtually to a third of the states of yeah. the country, yeah. the military have been deployed. Yes. Can we really then say that we should, the military should now go back to the barracks when we are about to do elections, when the atmosphere is almost like as if we're fighting a war. Nobody's fighting a war. I think our You just acknowledge now no, that the no, place nobody is, is, is fighting the a war. Is like a yes, that's the, they're creating the mood. Fight a war. Democracy and nation is not war. Like you said, the and but, it ought not to be. It ought not to be, yeah. but the way we are taking it, the chief of army staff uh, giving briefing. I mean, briefing against who? Against the civilians? Are we blaming the security agencies now? The reason I'm, I ask you I'm, I'm, I'm is because some people will say it is the rhetoric of both political parties. The manner in which they go about their conduct mm. is what heats up the polity yes. and could send the wrong message to their supporters. Exactly. Or might, you know, be showing that there might, there might be some desperation exactly. on the part of both major political parties, exactly. mostly. That's, that's what usually happens. Exactly. We shouldn't have security agencies managing we sh we should to have ensure that there agencies. is some neutrality. That's what, well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is that we should have security agencies. We have the police. We have the civil defense and other a parameter, a military organization, we should have them, but not the military. I'm emphasizing it, not the military. In 2015, mm -hmm. Honorable Baja Biamira sued uh, Jonathan and the, uh, at a federal high court in Lagos, and the court gave this same judgment because then APC felt that PDP was using uh, military to suppress them. In fact, APC national leadership had to write a letter to INEC. Mm -hmm. Was that fear justified? It was justified then, and it is still justified now. Mm. Now that APC is in power, they are, are doing the same thing that they were complaining. Mm. So who knows, maybe tomorrow, if PDP comes back to power, they will continue from this. We are not improving since 1999. Why are we talking about military in, 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 the, in this time of our democracy? We should be talking about the police. They are the ones that are trained mm. to uh, uh, have affairs with the civilians, not the army. So, so that's my fear.